Hi there and welcome to Game Changer. Yes, this is a show I like to do for my patrons. Basically, they send in their saves and I take a look at them and I share whatever ideas I can come up with and then there's a sequel to the show called In The Hot Sea where I actually do a playthrough for them. So on this show, uh, Game Changer, I'm going to take a look at a save sent to me by Mark Miller and it's he's managing Preston North End. What a surprise! This is one of those uh, clubs I have a sentimental attachment to. Yes, uh, a club rich in history. And yes, you should know. Okay, anyway, it's, it's a sentimental club and I'm not going to go into details as to why. Uh, all right, he's done pretty well. Um, he's managed to get them promoted into the Premiership and they're doing, they aren't doing too badly as well. Four wins, haven't lost a match. I can tell he's nervous because the save came in pretty quickly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he's had some nice wins uh, away. Watford, Burnley, okay, Leicester and West Ham. So he hasn't faced many of the top guns yet. He's drawn against United, Norwich and Everton. Now, against United, he drew at home. And against Norwich, he drew at home. Now, the thing about me is this. I like to know why people get and draw. And when I was going through your saves... I noticed one thing. You really, um, you you have a, a I think you want to play your four two three one, but you're not too sure because you keep changing your tactics. So you play one four two three one. You started the season with a four two three one. It didn't go so well against Everton, as you can tell. I mean, the numbers suggest yeah maybe you had you had something going for you, but honestly, two shots on target out of a uh, ten. Uh, if you look at the match. Uh, this is where I go, like, you know, I, I start looking at things like, okay, fine, what are your shots like in the shots on goal outside the box? Then uh, all the off-target shots, everything is outside the box, okay? Shots safe, not a very good position inside the box. Shots blocked outside the box. So, does the four two three one really work for you? It's a uh, important... A question that we need to ask ourselves. Then I'm looking at all the kind of crosses that you got in this game because if you play the four two three one, it's either your boys dribble into the box or they, they hurl crosses into the box. So I'm looking at this. I'm going, okay, you were able to get cross deliveries, but more, yeah, sometimes why were so many of them intercepted? Then the question, it, this begs the question: What was your strike force like? Uh, did you have players who can jump? Do you have players who can control uh, the box? So this is, these kind of things are very important. And, you know, you, whenever you create a tactic like that, you got to take a look at this. So I, I'm looking at your striker who was up front. His name is Tom Bradshaw. Jumping reach of 11 and heading of 12. So you've got a lot of crosses being delivered into the box, but you don't have somebody who can take advantage of them. So sometimes we have to adjust the way we play. So I so here I was thinking you might want a four two three one and then I'm looking at a few more matches and then I notice a change in your latest games. So you go to a four three one two suddenly eight out of eleven yeah you know I love my four three one twos, and then you got one more you swap to a four four one one I can tell you must be asking yourself I might I want to change my tactics, and you played against Manchester United you return to what you know best which is a four two three one and at this point in time. You managed to take the lead, but you hung on. Um, yeah, you hung on. This is the best way for me to put it. Uh, if I'm looking at the heat map, United not too bad. Preston North End. Okay, again, I'm I'm pretty impressed with your possession numbers and what you were doing in possession inside the box. Right, fifty one possession percent possession. If you're looking at the the split. Over here, it says, but here the split says, if you're looking at this alone, 44% of your possession was in your own half, right? And uh, maybe 41% if you were to look at it this way in the opposition half. Whereas United, on the other hand, they spent 11% of the time in your half, right? So, so okay, not, I'm still like thinking to myself, mm, something needs to be done here. Okay, all right, maybe the fourth, I mean, I'm not a big fan of using the four two three one if my side isn't very good. There are certain things that you demand in a four two three one, and one of them is you gotta have world class. I mean, literally, really good cent um, defensive midfielders. But before we get to the tactic, let's look at some of the stuff that I was think I like to check out. Okay, so let's see your staff. Uh, let's take a look at your training, right? So here we go. Training coaches, 
everything here looks okay except you got nobody on fitness training. I mean, why? This is strength. You want you do want a coach here. It's like um uh, yeah, you 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 have to get a coach to do some fitness training. It is mucho important importante. You don't get a coach to do the fitness training. There's a whole category of training they're avoiding. So get a coach to do it, please. So oh my goodness, I, I got a shock. I I didn't discover this. I was I was I had a sneaky feeling something was wrong, and this is the first time I'm looking at it. So you know, might as well do some work, Mr. Miller. Get your ass into gear and start working with the fitness training. I don't care if you know how to use weights. Learn, okay. So now, what about the second thing? Okay, guys. Balance training is fine, but you have to be very, very good at managing the calendar. Now, I know a lot of people have uh, like customized training. Okay, this is for people who are very good at using the notebook. Now, if you don't know how to use the notebook, this is the notebook. I see no notes. <laughs> okay, I love notebooks because you can create a note here. Say, okay, uh, tactical training from x to x date to y date you put it up here and then all you have to do is you put a category create a category training uh tactics right okay tactics and then uh do a reminder date select a date when you want and have an occurrence like how often do you want this reminder to come i set my reminders like once a year uh like you know Every three months or so, I get a reminder for my training routines. But you can set it once a year. But as long as the date, once it hits that date, you know, it will remind you to change your training routine. So you really need to use the notebook if you're gonna do that. But if you don't, if you don't do this, right? If you don't use the notebook and you want you pen and paper, that's fine too. But if I'm looking at this, it's think you've been on tactical for a very long time because you, the season is September 2017. I'm looking at this and I'm going, something is not really right here. Uh, you haven't done any other kind of training. Now, why is fitness training? Fitness training helps the attributes related to guys who want to survive. I'll exp you know, fitness training, it doesn't mean that you do fitness for preseason. This directly affects attributes related to fitness training so if you got strength training it hits those attributes that are involved in those areas so when i am looking at a team that's trying to punch above its weight then i do some months of fitness training and if i am unsure then stick on balance balance will work just fine just make sure then that you focus you know you, you set your training up by for each individual person in your team uh, then you can have one of these views. Um, you know, you guys know where these views are, right? So I've already made the uploads available. So you can use one of these views, and then you can. I notice they've been very specific about the way you want them to train. But look here, here, have so many people are very heavy. This in FM eighteen, if you do this, you might get a few players. A few of your players might get injured because, from what I can tell from the uh, medical center, from what I can tell from everything else, okay. You have to manage your workloads in FM18. As it's the same thing as what we're doing in FM17. But if you see very heavy here, the first thing you do, you go to your training. Mucholotu. Okay, you're already on medium. So you can't do much. So I'll drop this down. Rest day after rest day before match. Worst comes worst case scenario. Right? This is the worst case scenario. But you have to understand one thing. The when, once the schedule picks up. You're gonna have issues with your training as well, so uh, you gotta, you may even need to drop it because you got so many players who are working on areas like uh, this PPM. So the reason why he has this refrain from taking long shot has gone very heavy. Just remove this; he'll be fine. If you, if this is what you want, don't get into an additional focus. Remove the additional focuses for those guys who are um, who have very heavy. And it will reduce the intensity of their of their training. So the easiest way for you to manage the workload now is just remove the additional focus, and you all these players have dropped to heavy. Cool, we fixed that problem. What's the second issue that I noticed? Okay, well, let's go back to training team. Tactical average is fine, but me being lazy, I'll go balance. Yeah, if I'm lazy, I'll just go balance. 
So let's uh, let's worry about surviving. All right. So for the next couple of weeks, that's all we're going to do. Defensive positioning. I mean, there's, I, I'm not a huge. Um, I, I don't worry so much about match tactics. You know, preseason is over. Okay, it's September. My players should be fine with the tactics. Uh, there's n- nothing that to suggest that they are going to suffer. All right, what about the squad itself? Now let's analyze your squad and see where we stack up. So once again, I'll look at your squad, and I usually like to have views like this. All right, so I go to my match day view i've got a match day view i've got match day stats and this is what i was looking for all right let's look at your defenders let's see how they've done so far all right so all your defenders um hitters won aerial uh, challenges attempted so for your boys the back not too bad uh they 17.6 14.8 you can see they don't win all their hitters against everybody so they're okay they're not fantastic they they probably average but they make a good attempt to get to these hitters Connor Golson's jumping reach is 15 heading is 14 Hmm, okay O'Connell's jumping reach is 14 heading is uh 14 all right and uh looks like they're 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 average right so they're not too fan then you don't have to worry too much about them Okay, here we have one player who's cross completion attempts. Okay, these are his the percentages, and I noticed one guy called Charlie Mulgrew, and this becomes very interesting. He's got f- fantastic, he's fantastic at completing crosses, and he becomes my number one choice in your system. Seriously, he is very good at crossing. Look at thirty three percent. This guy is good. So we might want to consider him because I have you've been using Tyrone Mings. Tyrone Mings is a good player too. He's very defensively orientated. Okay, uh, his crossing is thirteen, dribbling is thirteen. But you've also got Charlie Mulgrew, who's also as just as good. And Charlie Mulgrew can play in a few positions. Gives you options. His positioning is fourteen. That's not too bad. Uh, there are options with this guy. He's not the fastest player in the block, but certainly he can pull his own weight if needed to. By going by going wide whenever those opportunities present themselves. All right, what about tackling? In terms of your tackling complete pers- completion percentage, here, Tyrone Mings. Okay, we know he doesn't do a very good job on the flanks. All right, fifty nine percent. You've got Malgru who's played like only one game. Mings. Okay, they, they, you can compare the two then, but they're like you know, they, they, I would be okay with the two defenders. But here in the air, your boys are just average at dealing with dangers in the air in the box time to look at your tactics i get a bit concerned when i look see tactics where people want to play a 4-2-3-1 defensively now there's you can it can be done but you really need good players to do that play the default way what i suggest is for most people who are struggling with their teams on and they're not they're not the top teams then play with two dms instead and then what you can do is you can get further forward on both of them and just change this guy into a defensive midfielder on support and tell him to get further forward. There you go. You've got two players who are going to bomb forward. Second thing you want to do is, you. when I'm looking at your tactics, you've got this 4-3-1-2 that you submitted. You've got two ball-winning midfielders and yet, you know, there's no other options for goals except for maybe hurling a ball over the top. But then again, you're using the shot play out of defense. Not a big fan of the shot. When you, okay, It's a great shot if you're on a camp. Which explains why you get a lot of shots on goal. But if you don't want to camp, you want the balls to move to the transition quickly, remove the shot and remove shorter passing. You can play a more dynamic attacking game and tear teams apart using this tactic. Finally, um, I noticed that you have really, really good wide players. So what you really want to do is leverage of that as well. So, you know, you have a, you had a 4 4 one, one. I'm not going to look at the 4 4 one, one, But what I would suggest is you even think of a 4 3 3 because the 4 3 3 might be suitable. So what we're going to do next is try something out in the next game. So what I've done is I made a 4 2 3 1 for you. And this 4 2 3 1 plays slightly differently because we're going to use two defensive midfielders and a register pushing forward. So both of them will have to get further forward instruction. Uh, work ball into box, exploiting the right flank with a winger on attack on the right flank, pushing high up, using the offside trap to compress space and preventing short goalkeeper distribution. These are going to be the team instructions. We generally want to make sure that... Um, Preston North End are defensive because you already have a 4-2-3-1. So why are we gonna why do we want to change things around? So we're gonna use counter structured as the uh, mentality and the shape. We the 
goal here is for us to compress the play when they attack and, and try and launch attacks towards the right flank where we have a winger on attack. The downside for us at the moment is that your Bradshaw is the only striker that you have. The two defensive midfielders in the middle will get, get further forward and more direct passes on them both. Inside forward, up here, close down, more tackle harder, stay wider. Um, we're going to remove one of those. Uh, then we've going to have uh, Tomlin closing down, more tackle harder. We've got Haliovich inside wing on attack, but I'm going to remove the close down more. I want him to be free to attack. Uh, up top, this, uh, we've got uh, the complete forward in Tom Bradshaw with no PIs to be done on him. Our first match was away to Brighton and this was a match we totally dominated in terms of possession. Uh, and you could see by the way uh, the tactic now works. You've got Helder Costa working really well, bringing the ball up. You have the players in your system. The only one player I'm a bit suspicious about is Tom Bradshaw. The, the boys are able to build play up. Towards uh, the 60th minute, I decided, okay, fine, let's roam from position. So I added that shout it that shout in and we managed to put a lot of pressure on their back line your boys are good enough to hold on to the ball they got into the box forced the penalty and there you go you know you had your first real chance in the game i mean first penalty in of the game i mean the only penalty of the game what am i saying fm18 is at the back of my mind it's actually ready to be played and uh you guys uh took the one goal lead and you were away this is definitely a very good tactic for you to use for your team because you have the players for it why change a formula that you have worked so hard to develop and you got the players for it i mean if i was managing president somebody comes out to me and says change your tactic i'll just kick him in the ass and this i love this part okay we made a tweak to our tactic because i want to pass into space and this i knew that the ai is going to start attacking us all right so we have already we are defending uh, against the AI and um, the AI was attacking us and just as I made the change we scored our second goal that means that the change wasn't really needed for the tactic right um, the tactic already has it in place for you to hit teams on the break and we were able to hit them on the break without me looking for pass into space when they were attacking us and we did quite well in our second match uh, we beat Stoke 1-0 away from home and this is down to your own set piece routine the only thing i would add right now is watch how you attack your set piece routine i discovered that stoke had three players at the halfway line as we were taking a corner and um you know if we had missed there would be a three versus my one fullback <laughs> so it was kind of fun well i hope you enjoyed this edition of the game changer and you found it handy now don't forget there is a show after this called in the hot seat for you where i show you a playthrough of what i did in the tactic and i hope you enjoyed that one too so if you have any questions you know to find me on twitter at bustanet or addicted to fm.com my website once again i'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this show you guys take care have fun and i'll catch up with you soon Bye bye